In uh, section two of chapter eight, we're looking at applications of Venn diagrams and contingency tables. Now, as we look at figure 8.7 here, we see we have the universe. We're using the letter U for universe. And then using the number one to describe this white area, which is, in a sense, a complement. So one would reference a complement, and two represents the elements of set A. And this is getting you ready for what we're going to be doing later, as you can sort of identify and get to know what the numbers refer to. Now in figure 8.8, .8, we see the universe, and that is represented by one. But now we have two sets, and there is union, there is intersection. And we're referring then to set A using numbers, reference numbers two and three, and set B three and four. And we see that three represents the intersection. So again, we're just arbitrarily numbering these regions as reference points. As we look at example one now, they want us to draw a Venn diagram similar to 8.8. .8. So it'll look somewhat like this here. We can raise it up a little bit more. And then shade the regions to represent the given set. That is a complement intersecting with B. Now in doing this, you want to have a strategy to get the right answer, of course. So first of all, what is a complement? Well, I made this little Venn diagram, and what I have here is a complement. I've shaded it red. So everything but what is in A. A complement, everything but what is in A. Now, we want to intersect that with B. So what I need to do now is shade in B. So I shade it in B. Now because of this symbol intersection, this is an and, I'm looking for where are both colors present. That is the red and the blue. It's where they overlap. And the only part they overlap in is right here. And that's what they're showing as the answer to A complement intersecting with B. We're looking for a strategy now to do letter B. We have A complement. Now, let's look at our reference numbers. What is a complement? Well, it would be 1, and it would be 4. That would be our A complement. So we have a 1, a 4, That is a complement. Now, what is our B complement? Our B complement 
would be a would be 1 again and it would be 2. Now if we want the union of that, what would we shade? Well we would shade 1 and 4 for A complement and we would shade 1 and 2 for our B complement and what would remain unshaded then? Three. And that's what they're showing here. And they develop it here as well. But hopefully you can understand a strategy in getting to it. Now they get more challenging, but again you want a strategy. So here we now have three circles. And again, the numbers are just to designate the various regions. So one would be the universe, and then parts of set A are two, three, four, and five and set B, where set A and B intersect would be three, where all three sets intersect would be four, and so on. I'm not going to go through all of them. You can just, when you're doing this, look at it carefully, but it leads to eight regions. Now they're asking us to shade a complement with union, and then this is taken together, B intersecting with C complement. So the strategy in doing this is you have to do this first, then once you've identified this, you will put it in union with A complement. So let's take a look at this, and they have it uh, worked out. So I'll use this diagram here to start it off. Again, what I've shaded in now is B. This is B. I'm now going to shade in intersecting with C complement. So I've now added C complement in blue. So C complement is everything but C. And you notice I'm now getting some overlapping because that's what I'm looking for, the intersection of B, which was the red, and now the C complement which is the blue, and I have this area and this area. I'm now going to add A complement to it. So A complement would be anything not in A. So I'm looking for now, what is green and what is red and blue and green? And it gets a little, and this is what we end up with. So again, you have your textbook, and I see in our book that we didn't make a little picture of this, but uh, 
you can get it here or there'll be enough examples that you'll have anyway. Okay, let's look at letter C. Now this example of course is to two. We're looking at example three. We don't get it to fit all on one page, although... Now in number three this gets to be challenging, but again if you see how it's done, it kind of takes away the mystery. So we have a business uh, problem here where market research collects data on 100 households and they find that 81 have cable television, 65 have high-speed internet, and 56 have both. Now, the researcher wants to answer the following questions. How many households do not have high-speed internet? How many households have neither cable television nor high-speed internet? And then how many have cable television but not high-speed internet? Now you want a strategy to figure this out. So a Venn diagram would be very useful and this is what we've set up. Now our universe of course is 100 that we have right here. And we're going to start to figure things out. So what do we know for sure? Well, we know the intersection of these two sets. The number is 56. So this is what we put in there. Now we also know that of the cable television, which were a total of 81 then, then if 56 of this are part of this, and what is the part of the 81 that doesn't have both? Well, if you subtract 56 from 81, you get your 25. So that's where 25 comes from. Now, we know again for high-speed internet, there were 65, but 56 of them have both. How do we find those that just have the HSI? Well, again, we're going to subtract the 56 from the 65, and we get 9. Ah. So now where all of this is 65 and all of this is 81, because of the intersection where members are in both, we now have separated them into their specific categories. So only nine of these have the high-speed internet and only 25 of these have the cable television. Now. How many don't have either? Well, if we subtract the 9, subtract the 56, and subtract the 25, we end up from 100, we end up with 10. And that's what they're showing down here. And hopefully, you got an idea of when you get one like this, how do you solve it? Put what's in the middle and then start subtracting to get what's out of it. And then these are your parts that have something that we subtract from the total to find those that do not have any of these. In example four, we'll take it step by step. It gets more complicated, but here we have a group of 60 first-year business students at a large university were surveyed with the following results. Now there were three magazines and journals that they were reading 
Business Week, Fortune, and just the journal here, Wall Street Journal. And then they give you various values. But what you want, as we did in the previous example, what is the one that's read by all? And that is nine read all three magazines. So we put the nine right there. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at are the 13 students that read Business Week and Fortune 13. But we knew nine of them read all three. So of these 13, nine of them have read all three. But we now subtract nine from 13 and get our four. So we've got two little bits of information. And reading on, we also have 13 that read Business Week and the Journal right here. So that's these two. So we have four there. We're now going to have another four there because this adds up to 13 this way as well. And looking over here for Fortune and Journal, 11 read those, Fortune and Journal. So from our 9, if we subtract 9 from 11, this will give us a 2 here. Now, who read the Wall Street Journal there? There were 18. Well, so far we have 11 and for our 15, well, we'll need three more then to have this reading the journal be 18. So we now have the Wall Street Journal. We did that one. Let's look at Fortune now. 50 read this. So 50 read this, but we have to subtract these three, which are 15. So 50 minus 15 will be 35. And how would you figure out Business Week here? Well, Business Week, we said, was 19. So we have 19 minus the 4, 4, and 9. That's 8, 17. So that should give us 2. And it did take some time my reading this over, looking at things, but again, developing a strategy to do it. Now, I do have this one in your booklet, so you get an idea of how it goes step by step. Notice that I figured it out a little bit differently than this, and of course there are different ways to have things done. And then the last, we find there's only one of the initial students that don't read any of these. All right, let's take a look at example five now. Now, looking at example five here, we see there are 100 patients exhibiting symptoms of fever, chills, headaches, and Dr. McLooney reported information on patients exhibiting these symptoms. 
of the 100 patients, and I won't read these, but you can see the numbers. And as you start to make a Venn diagram with three major symptoms, fever, chills, and headaches, you're going to make three circles. Label them. And then what you want to do, and I think this note down here is significant, in all the preceding examples, you should start with the innermost region with the intersections of the categories. That would be here where they're showing 35. And then you start working out, taking those and then subtracting. And here they're going through the details of it, similar to what we've done already. But for something like this, you need just to sit down. And now you see the protocol for solving it. We're going to let you work it. And then when you add all of these up and subtract it from 100, you find that there were three, as they say. And the numbers should jive. Now, in our booklet, we do give you this rule, which is the addition rule for counting. When you want to find what you have in both sets, we can take the union of set A and B, which is the number that are in set A, plus the number that are in set B. But now you have to subtract those that are found in both sets, because otherwise you're duplicating the numbers. So, again, you'll see some examples here. And you're saying, what's all in A? What's all in B? But then you have to subtract the Y, because that's where one set of duplicates would be. In example six, they're giving us sort of an easy example. There are 10 students all together, and we find that five are economics majors, seven are majors in accounting, and they're asking us how many major in both subjects. Well, we need to add those in accounting, which are the seven, with the economics. Five plus seven is twelve. And now we're looking for those that intersect, that are taking both. Well, we subtract our total from, or those majors, from the total number of students, and we get two. So those are the ones that are intersecting. So if you would, add this little Venn diagram to example six. There's plenty of room for notes. And we see that in group A, the five students that are economics major, there's our five. And then our seven that are accounting majors, there's our seven. But you can see now there are two that are taking both. So five plus seven is twelve. And if we subtract the ten from the twelve, we get the two because these are the ones that are repeating if we take our 12 number. Two of them are repeating. So we subtract the two 
from the 12 and we get the 10. Different ways to look at it. I don't like to read, but here it says it pretty accurately, well, of course, accurately, of what they want. So we are familiar then with Venn diagrams. We're going to take a look now at what is called a contingency table, which is sometimes also called cross tabulation that summarizes counts from several different groups. A contingency table is a table in a matrix form. Well, this is what a matrix is, where you sort of have columns and rows that give frequency distribution of several variables. Which, with such tables, we can compute the number of elements in sets of interest. These are our sets. The intersection of these sets and the union of these sets. So again, to get to our problem, we're going to have to go to our next page, but I have this in your booklet so we can use that as a reference. They are starting us off easy. We want to see how many are in set A. Well, looking at our chart, we see there are uh, this many thousand males and this many thousand females which are working full time, which gives you this total. Now in example B, we want to see the intersection of F with A. Well, set A are those who worked full time and F are the females so the intersection is just the number, again, of females who worked full time. So this is a straightforward number, which is the same as we have up here. Now, this gets a little uh, challenging for letter C as to what they specifically want, but it looks like they want M, which are the males altogether and then in union with those in C who did not work. And here they're including the females. Okay. So we add up our three columns of M across the top. These are worked full time. These are worked part time. And these are did not work and it gives you this total here. Now for C, that is did not work, we have the males here and the females, which give us this. So the union between these males, all males, and those people now that did not work is this. If we add them together, but now we have duplication here. This part is duplicated, so we have to subtract the duplicated males that would we would be counting twice here. And when we do that, we end up with this many people, and they show it. And again, this was people now, and these were males. So Again, why you would want that, I'm not sure, but that's the question they've asked. And in Part D now, they're looking for the union of B and C with the intersection of F. So if we took the union of B and C from our chart, these were males in B. These were females in B. And in C, these were the males. These were the females. But we want only the union of, I'm sorry, the intersection now with F, which are the females. 
So it's just these two sections, this and this. So if we add these two together, these would be our intersection. And we get this. And this is what they're saying is our answer. So again, careful thinking, judgment, and challenging. And you'll get your experience as you work on your study plan and what we've set up for you to do. And that'll complete basically uh, topic 8.2.